YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back in Total War Rome 2. This is Trolley Bully's Faction Band 2 tournament. This is still a round one match. This one's going to be Extra Suga and uh, Baby Killer. And uh, it doesn't say what factions they play as. Maybe some kind of language thing here. I don't, I don't know what in the world it is. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's got like all this stuff blanked out. Looks, it's Galatia versus Arverni. That's what the matchup is. So, and we will see the players' names at the end, along with their faction, so that's kind of weird how it did that to them, but yeah. So, Galatia... Take a look, I see two Galatian swords up front. Looks like four Levy Freeman in total, two on each flank. There are two Galatian noblemen on each flank, too, which that is a huge number of elite spears. Uh, down the center is going to be Galatian legionaries, four of them. They're backed up by four Galatian raiders, so no long-range missiles, uh, only mounted javelin units. Very heavy on spears, uh, which is interesting. Not exactly what you'd expect from Galatia. Three Celtic slingers from the Arverni that we can see. It looks like there's a chosen spearman and a spear warrior out there. Three levy freemen on this flank, and then a mix of chosen swords and oath sworn here in the center. Another chosen sword becoming visible there. Uh, it is possible there's another sword, like another oath sworn there, and if so, that would be three oath sworn and uh, four chosen swords. So that would be a pretty big melee core. Definitely something that's going to have to be dealt with. I forgot to make myself offline here so that I don't get messaged while I'm trying to record, so there we go. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Four heavy horse as well. So long range advantage goes to the. Arverni, horse advantage goes to the Arverni, but there is a massive number of quite capable spears on the field. And those spears could easily crush the Levy Freeman. They could easily crush the Spear Warriors. They would not do so well against a Chosen Sword, and they would not do good at all versus an Oath Sworn. I mean, a Noble Spear might be able to handle a Chosen Sword, but it's not a fight that you would want head on. So let's just kind of see what happens. These Galatian swords, I think, are going to be important. They're going to have to stop the charge of Oathsworn as much as possible. And they might want to consider pulling a Levy Freeman in. Yep, actually, I think this is a smart move. So if they pull the Levy... Because, well, I say it's a smart move. It may be a smart move. The Levy Free are very good at, you know, warding off horsemen. I might have just pulled um, only one Levy Freeman into the center to just get in the way of the charge of the Oathsworn and then kept the rest in the flanks to help deal with the heavy cavalry. But we'll see, it looks like they're switching to the Galatian swords to the outsides and bringing all the levy free on the inside. So we'll, we'll just kind of see how that plays out. It looks like he's pulled his Galatian noble, two units of them. Well, all of them. Actually, he's pulled them all into the main line. So this, this ought to be interesting. We'll kind of see how this plays out. He does have proper charge deflection because the Arverni is in a single line and it's going to be easy to deflect the charge of their Oathsworn if they stay in that single line. The question is whether or not the follow-up from the Galatian will be appropriate. We will see. The Galatian noblemen are now mixed in. These Levy Freemen are way too far ahead of the main infantry line, so I think this charge by the Arverni cavalry is absolutely appropriate. It will absolutely decimate these Levy Freemen. Uh, it's still in fast forward, my bad. And then, yeah, you can see here that he's gotten into the... Well, I, I wouldn't have charged the Galatian noblemen. That's kind of pointless. And they should be popping cap cavalry counter tactics. Getting into the Galatian legionaries here, though, was good. Because then the chosen swordsmen get a clean charge. So a very nice move by the Arverni player here. And the Galatian raiders caught here as well. And now, because they moved all the spears off the flank, it's just Galatian swords to try and stop cavalry. And that's not going to go as well. So I think the initial engagement was nice for the Arverni, but then he left his cavalry in and it was slaughtered. And he did not follow up very quickly with the Oathsworn. Um, the Oathsworn is not even doing great versus that nobleman, and it's going to get blobbed up on here by another Galatian uh, legionary. And the legionaries are going to do very well. This Galatian nobleman here is fighting off a, a chosen sword and a cavalry rather respectably. It's going to get backed up. So... Nice use of the Galatian Raiders here. They're going to take out the Slingers early in the game. Yeah, that's going to be great. So I, honestly, what started out looking a little bit crappy for the Galatian player, I think is looking pretty nice for the Galatian player at the moment. But we'll see. There's a heavy horse free that could really screw up this Legionary if it rear charges. Yep, that's the rear charge that they need. Let's see how effective it is. Heavy horse into the back of an engaged infantry. It ought to be fairly devastating. Uh, not left in there for very long, though. I would have left that cavalry in longer. 
let it take advantage of that charge bonus. I think that was a mistake. So just a quick hit and run there. Uh, the next target should have been right here then if he was going to pull out. So very odd that he's not following up to end the infantry fight and instead he's going to charge Levy Freeman which get a javelin volley and it's going to allow these jab cab to catch up. So that was a very... I don't think that was a smart decision by the Arverni player. If he was going to go for the rear charge he should have been decisive with it. Now these Galatian Raiders are going to come back here and just murder the Oathsworn General with javelins from behind. This is excellent use of the Galatian uh, Raider cavalry. And as soon as they run out of javelins, if they want to, they could throw a rear charge in here. But it, it doesn't look like their infantry is going to live long enough to provide the rear charge. But still, great way to kill a lot of Oathsworn with an otherwise cheap cavalry unit. I mean, the infantry fight has gone fairly well for the Arverni um, in some spots, like here, where the Oathsworn's against the Legionary. Convincing win. Um, the Galatian Legionaries here actually getting defeated because of the rear charge eventually. And a rear charge against these spearmen, though, I don't think that's actually going to do a lot. And trying to pull out of that really quick might just lose him cavalry. And it doesn't look like it did a whole lot of anything except get him javelin there. So yeah, I don't, I don't know that that charge did a whole lot. Rear charge from Galatian raiders here into the chosen swords. Going to kill some of them and hurt the morale, and then they're going to get away before the oathsworn shows up. So a nice quick charge there. But now this Galatian Legionary is going to be two on one. But there is uh, there is Galatian Raider Cavalry all over the place back here. And it's going to make its presence felt. Oathsworn now free over here, but it's still in shield wall and moving slow. This Galatian Sword and these two, these two units kind of collided. I don't know if they're being microed properly. Heavy Horse is going to get finished off. Slinger is getting finished off for the second time. And uh, the Oathsworn General of the Arverni down to 69 men. And here, this fight, this Oathsworn is going to die. Uh, not even able to take down a single unit of the uh, Galatian Nobleman, so that was not a good use of Oathsworn. Yeah, this Galatian Nobleman will crush that Levy Freeman. And then this Galatian Raider is going to be very handy here at intercepting this uh, Chosen Swordsman. It is a very heavy, inf or a heavy melee infantry, though, and this is just a light missile cavalry, so... It's going to do a lot of damage, but it really shouldn't stay there, because the, the mass, it's not going to fare great in the long run, but I think it's trying to keep it from getting in here and helping against the uh, Galatian General, which is not a bad choice. Still felt like that was an appropriate move. The Arverni General is holding out for an exceedingly long time. He's starting to get kills now. It's being more effective in the last part of this uh, battle than he, than he was in the first part. Shield wall being popped now for that Oathsworn. So we'll see. This other Oathsworn, if it can get over to this blob in time, could be decisive. It needs to get over there very quickly to save the general. The general is in shield wall, has second wind, he's in good shape. Charging into this fight here is completely wrong. He needs to get into this melee blob and save his general. If he can save his general, he's got enough infantry to tank this out for sure. So getting in here against the Glacial Nobleman, yeah, if he kills the Glacian General, it could be decisive, but if you lose your own general due to lack of support, it could be worse. Because this Chosen Sword unit is kind of starting to get the yellow morale here. Yep, look, here comes the rear charge from the Glacian Cavalry. So again, I think the other Oathsworn would have been better thrown into this melee blob to start killing enemy infantry faster and trying to get it to rout before the Galatian Cavalry got back. Because now the Chosen Sword was lost quickly, and the Oathsworn General is in rough shape. It's going to be a close fight, but I think that the cavalry is going to make the difference here. And this Galatian Sword uh, is going to be able to come in and help as well. So yeah, it's over. The, the uh, Arverni General lost there. So again, I think this unit would have been better used to, to attack this blob, and then try and fend off the Galatian uh, Raider Cavalry. But uh, it was a close battle. But the, the Galatians definitely played well here. I thought it was, uh, after being attacked pretty brutally by the uh, heavy horse head-on early in the battle, I thought the Galatian player did a nice job of making some moves to come back in that and managing his troops well through the rest of that battle. A lot of kills on these Galatian swords. They ended up doing quite well out there on the flank. And, and Levy Freeman, I guess, accomplished what they needed to, which was to be charge bait. And uh, the heavy horse did kill quite a few of them on the charge, but then afterwards didn't really get a lot of important kills. Whereas if you look at this Galatian Raider Cavalry, all but one of them did very well 
So that was a pretty nice exchange. The Glacian Nobleman here with a lot of kills. Uh, the General Unit, the, this one doing decent. These two kind of as expected. Usually usually Elite Spears don't pan out, but in this case it, it kind of worked out because there wasn't Celtic Warriors. If there would have been Celtic Warriors on the flank, that would not have been a very good trade for the Galatian Nobleman. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, so it looks like, uh, who was the winner? Or I can tell you by looking over here. So yeah, Baby Killer was the winner. He was the one playing as Galatia. Hope you all enjoyed that. Eric Carthage signing off for now.